Akika, Akika. I mean, Ghana, and you're the view. I think I like this song. Bing, 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 bing. You know, that, that's the typical Ghanaian Jamal. You know, if like you, if you, yeah. if you meet a group of Ghanaians and start doing this. Yeah. Uh, really, really. Yeah. Uh, if, if, you, if, you, if you play this thing and people can't respond, they, don't, they, they, are, not they are not Ghanaians. They are not from Ghana. They, they don't know. Let's talk about HUC. Then we jump into the Doomsday conversation. We'll talk to IES. We'll speak to the Deputy Minister. What on earth is going on with the power situation? Indeed, I have um uh, the deputy minister on the line okay. andre japan mesa he's a member of parliament for second and he's also the deputy minister for the sector good morning honorable mesa thanks for joining us good morning my brother and uh, happy new year the good same power. to you what is going on with the power is there doom so why are we not having a schedule well let me say good morning and to, at the very outset, indicate that uh, the doom saw as we, you and I know it, okay, was a um, uh, uh, power outage that stretched for in excess of three years. In fact, it was four years between 2012 and 2015, where because of some pipeline damage from Nigeria, the government at the time couldn't buy alternative liquid fuel to power our pump. Uh, last, and so we slept in darkness for four years. Uh, what had happened over the past few days uh, is that some obligation owed by GMPC to WAPCO uh, was an issue. Uh, WAPCO threatened GMPC made some initial payments. It uh, wasn't satisfactory. Uh, we requested the Ministry of Finance to top up, uh, had to go through some approval process. And as of yesterday evening, uh, following uh, what caused uh, withdrawal of their services? The Ministry of Finance has approved the sum of 10 million to pay for the, the, the part of, of, of that debt. And so uh, that was the hiccup that we had encountered, which then led to the outages over the past few days. But that has been resolved. Yesterday night, what caused services was restored, and that was accordingly moved from the west to the east to power plants in the east. Uh, and so there, there's no doom talk. To warrant the shadow, if I may add. So the, you're saying that the definition of doom saw is when the situation is protracted and Absolutely. and when the cause is is beyond our control. Is that what you're trying to say? Well, uh, uh, every cause is within your control uh, because the four sources are varied. Okay. Uh, in the case between 2012 and uh, 2016, uh, if you look at the data that had been put out there by government at the time, uh, there was some ship anchor that had damaged the West African gas pipeline, which was supplying us some fuel from Nigeria. Uh, that damage then led to the lack of fuel coming from that source. Uh, and so the alternatives were to buy liquid fuel, which is light crude oil or heavy fuel oil, to power the plants that were originally dependent on the gas. They just could not buy. And so that's why we, we slept in darkness for four years. Well, I'm saying that <laughs> subsequently mm. following the uh, uh, gas, our own domestic gas, which then powers almost 90% of our power plants, the gas is mainly from the West. Of course, we still depend uh, on some West African gas pipeline gas from Nigeria. But the bulk of our gas is domestic, mainly from the West. And there's a system that then moves excess gas from the West, which is Western region, All right. which is Tema. Okay. That uh, service is what there was some obligation. Yeah, you, you've expl you explained that. I was just trying to yeah. clarify why you chose to define Doomsaw the way you did. That, but that's fine. That's within your right to do. I'm not sure the doom sort of the previous time was four years, as you say, but that's really a different debate. Yesterday, Kofi Bua said that we had shed 500 megawatts, and that was serious because according to him, in our history, we have not shed 500 megawatts before at a go. Is it correct that we shed 500 megawatts yesterday? Yes, the, 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 the power that shot for was about 
seven hundred. Okay, and so what Great uh, Coup DRA ACG did was to reduce the uh, outage, I mean, the supply to our neighboring countries uh, to reduce the impact on Ghana. I'm not so sure whether we've not shared 500 at a go, because uh, for the period between when Mr. Boa was uh, Minister for uh, Petroleum, uh, I suspect is the one that you made reference to. Yes, Kofi uh, uh, I, I, uh, I don't have privy to the data now, but I'm not so sure whether all the time that we slept in darkness, uh, uh, it was as a result of a lesser quantity of generation that then led to the outages for the period. And, 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 and then I didn't say it wasn't up to four years. Uh, I, I do not know where uh, you have been. As far as I'm concerned, between 2012 and 2016 was a period where we experienced uh, protracted power outages here in the country. Mm. As a matter of fact. Do, do you not think that uh, consumers deserve a shadow? Even if it's three days, even if it's one week, because the power outages we've been experiencing have been pretty regular for the past few days. But, why have why 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 weren't or why aren't people giving prior notice? Or we, uh, we, 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 we just get up and there's no power and nobody explains anything to us. Anything we, to we us. were we were engaging, okay. Uh, in fact, I personally had discussions with the managing director of WAPCO. He deferred the original cut update from second January to the 5th, subsequently 7th, because we're working with Ministry of Finance to, as it were, make some funds available to enable us to pay WAPCO. And so the notification was such that uh, it was really short notice. That's why it probably was not um, uh, communicated by way of, uh, if you like, a shadow. Uh, but remember that uh, with public schedules even as of two years ago, when we were doing the program that we dubbed Doom uh, there was a need for us to take power off the grid. We communicated to Ghanaian uh, for a very short period uh, there was. Uh, so if uh, the managers deemed that uh, this required public notification, uh, we scheduled a day or two, or I, I'm not so sure whether even the adverts that you place can be effected within a day. Uh, in any event, uh, it was on the 9th that WAPCO went off. As of the evening of 10th, they were back because of the payment that had been made to them. Right. Just, just, fair enough. Just, just, in that period, mm -hmm. a shadow publication would have been required. Good. A, a month and a few days ago, specifically December 4, Sunan Asugli announced a shutdown of his power plant over government and paid debt. After some negotiations, they reversed the decision uh, and government paid um, some 30 million out of 60 million. So if you just take a month, there have been challenges with the sector, predominantly financial. So you've just told me that you've made some payment, it, finance which has made some payment and therefore WAPCO has backed down on its suspension of the, the flow. So if you look at it over a period of a month, we can say we are having intermittent power supply because of cash flow or financial issues. So if we are just waiting for the next supplier or the next provider to say, you should, you should pay me, then we go back to the same situation. So what I'm trying to say to you is that what you said does not appear to be the solution. You haven't solved it long term because so, the, oh, there seems to well. be a, a, a sort of a regular cash flow challenge which leads suppliers and and IPPs or power producers to say we are threatening to shut down or we will shut down and then you sort of come back and negotiate. That seems to be the situation we're in. Well, not entirely. Okay, and, and I say so because uh, the, the two circumstances are different. Uh, what we've done is to uh, keep all the IPP payments current. Okay, effective I believe July of 2023. All IPPs are paid on the tier one mechanism under the cash waterfall mechanism. They are paid, I believe, $43 million per month. But there's some outstanding obligations, okay, uh, if you like, historical, 
that government has paid some, if you recall, in 2017, some significant payments were made to bonds that were raised on the SLAP to pay down a huge component of the debt. Subsequently, some additional debt has been accrued, uh, for which we've ring friends and have negotiated uh, largely with all the IPPs. We've reached agreements with some of them. Uh, some that still conversations are ongoing. Okay. Uh, some of them are there was some commitment to pay them some money by a certain date that did not materialize uh, because of some of the matters that uh, came up. Uh, and they threatened to pull out, come and engage them. Uh, and they, you know, as it were, relax their threat and, and continue to provide the services. But it will be instructive to, to, to inform you that. I've been part of some of the conversations, right? Out of an existing debt uh, of about 1.7 billion, 35% of that is excess capacity payment, right? For power that we have never, ever used because of the over-contracting that the NDC government did. But it's an obligation of the state that has to be paid. So if for some reason, if it is unable to raise the revenue to pay, Minister of Finance has to come in. So that's, 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 the, that's the government of the problem. Okay, if 35% of uh, 1.7 billion debt is for power that was contracted at the time that we didn't need it, those people ought to be asked questions. Are we? <laughs> and what, what percentage of the the obligation is for this excess capacity thing you are saying? I've said 35% of the 1.7 billion. 35. Power that we have never used or have never that. needed. If you got it. Yes. And you see... Uh, and, sorry, and for how long? How long are we supposed to make that payment? How long? Uh, well, you, you were supposed to pay them when the invoices were issued. <laughs> you were unable to pay so it's accumulated over time. Okay? I'm saying that your demand will grow. Yes. And so you need to contract power. No issue. But the volume of power that you contract at every point in time is critical because you pay for it. And so if you need your peak demand is 2,500, you contract 5,000 megawatts of power and expect that that would take 10 years of incremental growth to achieve the 5,000. Your obligation to pay for the 2,500 on a year by year reducing basis until that period where you consume all of it is real. But you hear our friends, especially my friends in the NDC, oh, we are doing all sorts of talk. But this is money that could have been used for something else if you had contracted the power incrementally, say 3,000 or 500 additional, and plan yourself or pace yourself such that you increase it by some gradual addition. Is that what they did? In any event, at the time that they were contracting this power, it wasn't as if we were, were even having short funding generation. I will send you some documents that you mm. see for yourself. Mm. Okay. Now, in addition to so, all... So that's, the, that's the reality, okay? And, and, and I am saying that the yes, government has done well in raising the money to pay for it, but the occasional hiccups like the one that we saw in the past few days have come up, and we've dealt with it such that the, 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 the gas flow has been restored and power has been restored to the Ghanaian okay. economy. The, to ensure that just an, economy another point. Whilst the power supply has been intermittent, the government has now, through the GRA Ministry of Finance, announced a 15% VAT on electricity consumption for those beyond a certain band. I mean, for from my memory, in February, we had a tariff adjustment upwards by 30%. In June, we had an 18% adjustment. Indeed, it was only the third quarter of last year that we did not have an increment. So we've had consistently, if you compare January to now, over 50-something percent increase in power accumulation. And you are adding a VAT to utilities. What is the logic in that? Well, the rationale, I believe, 
uh, the Minister of Finance provided in the 2024 budget statement that the, there's a need for us to expand the scope of our tax net, right? And one of the means that they were using to ensure that was to reduce the rate of VAT and to expand the scope of coverage of VAT. Uh, and the expansion of the scope is what has affected the, 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 the payment of electricity tariffs. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, of course, I've heard the, the complaints. Uh, this, this was communicated by a letter that I saw uh, on social media myself yesterday and uh, uh, following comments on social media, on mainstream media this morning. Uh, it's an issue of concern. But I guess that it's important that the Ghana Education Revenue Authority provides education. The Ministry of Finance comes out to spell out clearly the rationale. Uh, but it's applicable on many, many services that we consume. And so if it's extended to electricity, uh, I believe that the rationale ought to be explained uh, for these resources that what goes into paying for the bills that you and I enjoy. And, and so I think that uh, they've thought through it and have put it out there. Where we need to interrogate for them to provide better clarity uh, for, for, the, for the consumer. Uh, the timing of this, with all the challenges we face in the economy, the massive levels of um, sacrifice Ghanaians have made with the haircuts, inflation, exchange rate things, taxes increase all over. Now you are taxing utilities. I mean, honorable, honestly, this is... It's, it's almost unconscionable that you can add a tax to tariff payment. Tariff has already gone up and you are taxing the tariff. It's almost unheard of. <laughs> you know, why? Why should Ghanaians have to pay? Because the, the tariff itself is going up, right? That's not as if the tariff is flat. The tariff, wait, I've told wait, you... Wait, 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 we can have the debate. I, yeah, I, I, I mean... I, I welcome a healthy one. Okay, and I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that works like unconscionable and, you know... Uh, it's, is what is going to, you know, as it were, uh, uh, deal with the issue. Okay, there was a rationale that was provided in the, uh, the 2024 budget statement. Part of IMF conditions was to increase our tax uh, revenue. Uh, and so you, look, you need to look at the various levels of taxes and, and to see how you then manage it such that the impact is minimal. Okay, uh, it's entirely possible that some new tax measures could have been introduced that then would have been much more adverse on the Ghanaian. Uh, uh, President has indicated the need for us all to bear and share. The Minister of Finance has indicated. Thankfully, the economic indicators are beginning to look in the right direction. Uh, we are hoping that things will stabilize. Inflation has reduced. Exchange rate is stabilizing. Uh, of course, the pricing mechanism for electricity tariffs includes the exchange rate. And so if the exchange rate is stabilizing and coming down, I believe that last month or the last quarter when they did the adjustment, there was actually some reduction, albeit uh, very minimal. Okay. But that's the mechanism that has been put in place to ensure that at least no debt is accumulated in the sector beyond what is already in place. So that the Ghanaian is also called upon by way of some introduction of new taxes to deal with them. And so there's a broad scope spectrum of issues that you are managing at one time. Uh, yes, the global economy has been challenged. Uh, we all know that. Uh, I just came from UK last night and uh, for the period that I was there, uh, everybody is complaining. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, but the Ghanaian is looking to what he can get. Okay. And government has provided substantial relief in the 2024 budget to address some of these concerns that you raised. And uh, let's all be hopeful uh, as the global economic tensions is. Uh, I'm sure that uh, some of these things can be reviewed uh, uh, and, and, and we all can, can march on this uh, part together uh, to build a right. All right. Uh, so, so, so just finally, that. just to confirm, so based on the payments made, you can confirm that the outages we experienced for the past three days are over. So today, 11th of January, there will be no outage. 100%. Okay. We'll hold you to your word. Thank you for talking to yeah, us. Yes, sure. MP, MP for Second D, Deputy Minister for the Energy Sector, Honorable Andre Japamesa.
financial issues. You you were right on point there. Payment has been made, and as I pointed out to him a month ago, Sunan Asogli threatened to shut down cash flow problems, political matters, VAT on power makes all matters worse. These are, these are rough times, guys. I wanted to ask him a question about the government's strategy to expand mm. access to electricity. Mm. Because that also could mm. have helped deal with the excess capacity issue, if indeed there is an excess capacity issue. Mm-hmm. was another uh, matter that hopefully we, we once we get another opportunity. Yeah. I need clarification on the numbers because mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it would be interesting to know what the peak demand uh, is, mm-hmm. basically, and what is available. Mm. Mm. So that you can get a sense of this. So that we can get a sense of how we don't need things. That, yes. Mm. Well, we, we didn't put that question to him. I'm sorry I couldn't, couldn't do that. But we'll take some comments. Caleb, what are people saying? He says yeah. that they've paid the money. So the power will come to, there will be no doom so today. There are lots of comments here. Mm. Um, okay, so good morning, Bernard and team. Please, if you are the manager of City, you are the manager of City FM now. If mm. things are not going well at your place, but you came and met them and said you fixed things and they are no longer the same as before. After some time, if the situation is degenerating to what you met, will you blame it again on the past? Tell the Deputy Minister of Energy to stop throwing dust into our minds. We are not toddlers if he thinks Ghanaian's minds, Ghanaian minds are shallow. This is Peter from Nungwa. He's not too happy. Good morning, City CBS. Please, our lights went off at uh, Dodoa this morning around 7 a.m. I hope the light would be back soon mm. from E.T. Mensa of Dodoa. Mm. What lies are we being told? You claim we export power. You claim someone has contracted a nation to unsustainable contracts. Mm. How then is it that we are sleeping in darkness? Kofi from Kaswa. Hello, City. Mm. Good morning. Did I just hear the Deputy Energy Minister mention and blame NDC for the current power problem? Shame on him. I thought the same NPP government said they solved Dumso. Hmm. How do they solve it? Now there is Dumso and they shamelessly blame NDC. It's annoying. <laughs> this pension of NPP apparatchiks. Apparatchiks. Uh, yeah. Quick to blame NDC for current challenges is a shame. That, okay. Uh, we sell power to CDI, Togo, and Burkina Faso. So why are we not generating... Uh, the so-called excess capacity and sell them to offset our excess capacity debts. Mm. These guys like politics. Hmm. 500 megawatts of power is a lot of power. It is. It's yes. a lot of power. So I remember in, on, on the, in December, mm-hmm. I interviewed, I think that day you were supposed to interview Mr. Mahama, but you had to leave. And I asked him that, just in simple, plain terms, mm. how much is 500 megawatts and how much of a dent would it make? And he said, that was when the IPPs threatened that yeah. they were going to shut down. Mm. He said, look, 500 megawatts was a lot. So if virtually the whole country is feeling the pinch, then you are right. 500, 500 megawatts is like, a lot. Of somebody power. saying it's, it's like the whole of Ashanti region, the whole of Central and parts of Volta. So if That's you, if how you much power? Regions. So Ashanti is like the biggest region in Ghana. Mm. If you add that to central and possibly half of Volta, that's a lot of power. That is being... Um, um, that was shit. Yeah. You know, we, we probably need to deal with this excess capacity issue because, you know, it's become political football. Yes. And I think what we need to do is to try and unravel it properly. Yeah. Because what's happening is that the NDC obviously would attack the MPP for the power crisis we're facing. And the MPP is trying to say that it was problems that they... Heritage. Yeah, so, and trust me, it's six years or seven yeah. years. So, we, we need to look at the nature That's of the contracts true. that were signed. But the, the truth, though, is that the way the power goes off with that announcement is pretty annoying. Yeah. And the ECG has been making a lot of noise about raising revenue. So, when people have this power challenge and the ECG is quiet, yeah. you know, that's the issue. I think the government must find a way of letting people know, even if it's just for one week, that, look, your power is going to go off because you have this problem and I'm going to deal with it. I don't know whether because they're having these IMF discussions or whatever, they feel like, they need to control the information so they don't have to admit it. But Ghanaians are smart. We know. If there's no power, we know. You know. And I say, do so. It's one of the ones that people cannot hide. Because you can say there's no money in the system. People will say it's normal. But if there's no power, Charlie, that one, one people will not forgive I'm you. I'm having lights out this morning at Malage or close to Valley View University. Hmm. Did the deputy minister say no do so today? Hmm. 
Jesse from Sakumano, good morning. With the comments from the Deputy Minister Bernard, I give up. So that's from okay, Sami? that's from Sami from Kung. Okay. Now, uh, the, the first one... Yeah, Jesse from, from Sakumono is saying, listening to the Deputy Minister speak this morning is getting me angry. Hmm. It would be better said listening to music. He speaks of excess capacity payments for energy we don't need. Yet, just last month, his government has signed new power agreement. That's Jesse from Sakumono speaking. Mm. My side of Teshidungwa, no light since yesterday, uh, since last night. Mrs. Sama Chuku mm. sent that through. Mm. Um, good morning, City. Is the minister you are interviewing telling us that Dumso is defined as inability of government to buy gas or what? It says Dumso is when it is four years and when it is caused by some other factors, something, something. Uh, I don't really know. Is it that the big schools they have attended have different definitions than what we know on the streets? Please, so tell the minister, light off at OEB not hmm. too long ago. So his promise has failed. Hmm. <laughs> not from OEB. Okay. And then there's one I find. Okay, we can, we can do with some more. Is there more? No, I think... If you've done a couple of them. Well, he says that the situation has been solved. So by tomorrow... Mm -hmm. He says today... <laughs> you don't think so? Uh, honorable Mesa, my good friend, cannot tell me the problem has been solved. Mm. You see... The, the they don't have the money. You yeah. know they don't have the money. But mm. outside of the money, the issues that have been in the same whereby ECG did that uh, revenue collection drive mm -hmm. was part of it. Try to raise money. Mm -hmm. Have the ministries been paying their bills regularly? We know they have still not. They owe mm. more than anybody. Mm. They are still not paying. Mm. Those are the things that contribute to these things. Mm -hmm. Rural electrification. If you were able to increase mm -hmm. access, mm -hmm. it means you can collect more revenue yep. again yep. Mm -hmm. to fill that gap. Mm -hmm. And then again, like I said, I really also want to know whether we have excess capacity. Hmm. This, this uh, we, I mean, what is our current demand? Because I think we are uh, peak demand is something around three thousand five hundred, if I'm not mistaken. I don't want to hazard play with numbers right now, okay? But I'm trying to get that information. Yeah. Okay, it's well, a, and what our dependable capacity is mm, so that we can run the difference at the moment. Very important. Very, very important. But I, I, I do not believe a word of what Anabol Ajapa Mesa said. I doubt that, that the as messages... In, as in that the, the, the money has been paid and therefore the the the, the gas that was... Because GMP is apparently See, old. Bernard, Babco. You made this point. <laughs> what you cannot hide. Don't say something you cannot hide. We have had power challenges mm -hmm. for the past year and a half. Mm-hmm. Our lives have been going on and off mm -hmm. for the past year and a half, just not on a very large scale. Mm -hmm. There are days once in a while they'll give you boom, then they'll issue a statement <laughs> and tell you, oh, we have some small problem. Mm -hmm. But we've had power challenges. Everybody knows it. Mm -hmm. So however nicely you couch it, does not change the fact that it's an ongoing problem. So you don't like, think it's, a, it's been solved finally? It's probably been, it's a palliative. Like they've paid some money, they've both returned the gas. Then when there's a new a due payment, they'll probably say... Of course. Yeah, so it's of like you're running. So he should not tell us this. So they, well, they, they have a cash water for mechanism. Let's hear from Nana Amuisi the seventh, executive director for IES. He spoke yesterday explaining his knowledge of the matter. There is no Ghanaian that is not experienced in this situation. Everywhere you go, you find our outages. I've been in Cape Coast for the past three days, and um, I, I have not enjoyed power for more than 48 hours in the last three days. And so it tells you uh, the kind of situation we find ourselves in. You are reporting from Accra that you've had a challenge. In Cape Coast, um, in Mankestim, in the Kunfi Aburu, and all over the place, everybody have power outage. As we speak today, at this moment, um, the entire Kunfi, almost um, the, the whole section of Kunfi, is out of power. I see. What explanations from the technical side do we have? Well, uh, the, 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 the generation bit is having that challenge. It's not like um, the plants are not ready to work. The plants are ready to work. But the fuel, um, and this time we're talking about natural gas, that is to be fed into the plant to get it running and put the power on the grid for us to get uh, it in our various homes and businesses has been the challenge. Uh, in the Western Corridor, GMPC is able to move power from Atwabo to the Western Corridor. And so, except 
uh, T1 that is not working, all the power plants in the Western corridors are working. But to move that natural gas from the Western corridor to the Eastern corridor has been the challenge because WAPCO is the transporter or the transmitter of this natural gas. And they have chosen not to, uh, you know, move the gas. They've shut down their valves. And so no, no single, you know, um, uh, or uh, no, no amount of gas is moving from the Western corridor to the Eastern corridor. Yes, of course, we are getting the end gas or the supply of gas from Nigeria uh, to the Eastern corridor, but it's not more than 555 uh, million per cubic feet. And so um, the only plant that is having, taking this uh, Nigeria gas supply is uh, um, Asogli. And it will surprise you that Asogli that's supposed to even produce about 55, 550 megawatts is producing less than 200 megawatts because only two uh, of the plants can run. Only two generators can run with the kind of supply they're getting from Nigeria. So the major challenge is hauling the natural gas from the Western Corridor to the Eastern Corridor for power plants in Tema Enclave, particularly to get running. And, so the, and the, haulage, the haulage, uh, the challenge with the haulage is not technical, but it's financial, isn't it? Of course, as we all understand. And, and going forward, uh, we did indicate last year that our major challenge in the sector will be a, a financial in, in kind. And it's going to linger uh, for a long time. And uh, we'll be seeing more of this doom so even as we draw closer to the end of the year. Because until we position ourselves to um, generate enough revenue in the sector to pay all the players, at one moment, you will find that WAPCO will open the valve, but then other plants will also choose to shut down because government owes them. So all our issue today is financial, and we pray that we don't get technical issues coming to compound the situation. Before we came into the new year, there was a standoff between the IPPs and the government. It appears that problem was solved, or was it a quick fix solution which has become a problem again? Well, of course, it's a quick fix, we all know. And uh, as we speak today, the amount of revenue that we generate uh, from the power sector um, vis-a-vis the cost incurred uh, is far less. And so if I should use uh, a simple analogy, you use 10 cities to generate power. By the end of the day, you're receiving just about seven cities from the sale of the power. How will you be able to, you know, pay all the cost components within that stream? It's going to be very difficult. So we are piling up debt in the sector. And when you pile up debt, it means that you are not able to pay the, the, the utilities in the sector. At one moment, it may be the transmitter. At another moment, it may be a generator that you are not able to pay or, uh, um, you know, uh, a transmitter of uh, same power like Grico. And so we have a whole lot of issues in the sector. We pray that government find the right tuning and generate more revenue to probably cover all the costs. Other than that, we, we are likely to see the power sector debt uh, increasing every month. It's interesting you mentioned revenue there. I'm looking at the Facebook post of John Abdullah Jinapur. He served as Minister for Power in the Mahama government. He's MP for Yapeku. So... Uh, let me read the post and ask you to comment. He says, governments to impose value-added tax, that's VAT, on residential electricity consumers. The Akufado Baumia-led government has taken taxation to another level by deciding to charge VAT on residential electricity consumption. It must be made abundantly clear that residential usage of electricity has always been considered a social good and has always been exempted from VAT. In the wake of the ever-increasing economic hardships, the government, through the Ghana Revenue Authority, GRA, has directed all electricity and power producing companies to apply the get fund levy of 2.5%, NHIL 2.5%, and VAT rate of 12.5% on the value of the energy they supply to residential consumers. This can be classified as a fresh tax that will add extra burden to consumers. By this, consumers must prepare to pay more for the electricity they consume in the coming days. Without any shared Without any shred of doubt, the introduction of this new tax has been occasioned by the IMF conditions imposed on Ghana. What do you know about this? Is it true? 
definitely um, it is the case, and uh, we 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 deem this as uh, retrogressive, and uh, uh, it's a situation that is going to compound the problems in the sector. If you apply this levies, then of course you are choosing to um, ask consumers to pay more for power consumed. If any other you know sector player or investor is looking at this situation, they will advise themselves to the extent that they will invest in the sector. Because when you increase the tariff, you are increasing the burden on consumers. They may be compelled to either shy away from that power system or bypass the system by way of theft as well. When they bypass the system and probably resort to um, uh, generators or probably uh, renewable energy, then, of course, you are going to get excess capacity, of which will come with other costs that I mentioned. You have to pay for same. And so what government is doing is rather going to worsen the situation that we have today. It's going to make the power sector unattractive. It's going to uh, increase uh, you know, the, 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 the stealing and the theft in the sector. And uh, we, we think that it's, going, it's not going to stop any situation here. Nana Moisi, the seventh, is every director of IES. He says, this is not yet Uhuru. Indeed, he expects the situation to get worse. In direct contrast to what the deputy minister said to me, Nana Moisi was speaking on IWT and says, they, his points very much in sync with what Godfrey is saying. Well, we have 24 hours to check whether the power has gone off. All those who said they had power that went off last night and two days ago, tell us whether your power has come back or not and whether it has stayed on because tomorrow we'll discuss this as well. 847 Heritage Christian College is set up to provide the missing link in tertiary education through conviction, character, development, creativity, compassion, and community. We are created by GTEC, affiliated with KNUST and UCC. We are at Amasaman behind the Olympic Stadium. And then, under the experienced faculty who has color practitioners, financial support is available. We offer flexible payment terms of 25% discount for all freshers. Call 054 777 731 or 020 298 or dial star 789 star 300 hash or go to hcuc.edu.gh. Now, hey there, looking for a one-stop solution for all your needs. Look no further than the Breeze app. The Breeze app has uh, the most affordable rights in town. And you can also pay your ECG smart meter prepaid bills on the app. The app also offers you instant car insurance and gas cylinder refilling minutes. We've got mm. you covered. But that's not all. You can shop for items from any market near or far, and Breeze will deliver them to you instantly. Breeze can even ship to you right here in Ghana. So say goodbye to the stress and say hello to convenience with the Breeze app. Just download that from the App Store or the Google Play Store. And if you're a builder, a homeowner, block maker, then Diamond Cement is your number one option. They have two types, 42.5 hour grade and 32.5 hour grade. If you want to speak to Diamond Cement, please speak to them directly on 244 31 Three three six eight or zero five four zero one 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 nine seven eight or zero two zero two zero two one one seven five diamond cement still hard as a diamond. More comments on the power situation. Caleb will help us. Yes, Bernard, mm. much, much earlier. Pram, pram, no lights. Mm. My side of Tishinungwa has no lights since mm. yesterday. Mm. It's low voltage, not low current. Someone said that. Thank through. you for the correction, Sarah. Tishinungwa, mm. almost on a daily basis. Good morning, City CBS. My lights go off at 12 noon and come back at 2 a.m. Mm. It's a 14 hour off, 10 hour on for noon us. to 2 a.m. And I'm for my jaw. Send okay. that through. Hi, I think the selection of areas affected by the load shedding is a good conversation to have. Mm -hmm. I live uh, in an area of zero load shedding in Accra. We have no idea what you are talking about mm. practically. It seems the powerful voices who can speak to the issues are often silenced with comfort. Mm. The rich are getting richer, the poor are suffering harder. Mm. He says anonymous. He didn't tell us where he was listening no, from. No, 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 so we know why he's not having yeah. so. Okay. Good morning, Bernard. Good morning. As Gan Odumase, our light went off on Saturday at 6 p.m. Mm. And then it came back on Sunday at 9 p.m. Why are you serious? Went off More than 24 hours. Yeah, it went off at 10 p.m. and came back at 4 a.m. Mm. But that part of Odumase had light off. Went off on Monday at 10 a.m. Mm. and then back at 7.30. Light went off on Tuesday and Wednesday as well. Mm. This is from Agnes Opoku mm. who has sent as hell load shedding 
experience plan. He has their own calendar. Yeah. A few more. 54 We're talking about the power situation in the country. And lots of people testifying to the doom show. Yeah. The deputy minister says they've made a payment for Ghana Gas uh, to the WAPCO to deal with that matter. Yeah. So the doom saw that we got the past few days, indeed, I didn't admit it was doom saw, mm. but it says that the load shedding or the power that you do not have, mm. today there will be power. More comments coming in. It's highly unconscionable for these guys to take Ghanaians for a ride by slapping VAT on electricity tariffs. These guys are heartless and shameless to say the least. <laughs> there is a financial situation at hand, but ECG had money to go buy motorbikes for Ghana police, but... Huh? Uh, their MD isn't available to answer questions. When are we going to get serious as a nation? Francis Oakley. Tema. Yeah, Wait, in December. When, when did, they did what? You were not here. There was a, ah, a donation. You are not here. It was part of their CSR. They did a donation to motorbike. the police of yeah, motorbike. They, they gave them the 200 C- bikes, I believe. Yeah. 200 The bikes. ECG. Yes. Oh, yeah. Did what? As part of their CSR, yes, made a donation to the Ghana police. <laughs> Ghana police. Of motorbikes. Motorbikes. They bought bikes. Don't bikes. forget that when they go about their revenue enforcement they go with them yeah. don't forget that when they do they are they have this thing they do with them when they were doing the meter thing so they actually partnered them to do it so i think the ecg felt like they needed to thank the police so they give them motorbikes Zero five four nine nine eight six nine nine six. more comments coming in on the show yes bernard good morning this posture of the deputy minister and the akufado government is the reason why we are where we are they never admit their abysmal performance after seven years in government you're still blaming the previous government mm-hmm. jones and the boy from la senda through good morning bernard and team on the issue of ecg and doom so i want to find out from the ecg why they've installed postpaid meters for over a year uh yet Efforts to get my bill has proven futile. In fact, they asked me to go take pictures and videos and video my meter for my bill. Yet it's amounted to nothing. I need help. You didn't add your name. Not Okay, this is Philip in New Tafo Akim. Okay. Good morning. We Good should morning. push for public servants and ministers to pay for their utilities. And mm. let's see if they can rationalize increases and VATs. <laughs> a book. From Osu. Mm. It's clear he was just waiting for the opportunity to blame the NDC. Mm. He seemed to be stammering at the beginning of the interview. Mm-hmm. As soon as he finished blaming NDC, he found his voice shaking my head. Hold he on. didn't add your name. Hold Good morning, Bernard and Good morning. Yes, our Deputy Minister of Energy is annoying. Mm. You see how he was quick to attack the words Bernard used instead of addressing the issue? Mm. Okay. okay, that's Malik. Uh, If you're listening to us, it means you have some power. <laughs> whether it's on a battery, whether it's in a car. It's been a tough couple of years. We don't need Doom to compound it. The government should do everything possible to prevent that. 9.15, we're bringing you Effective Living Series. Mirko Agis is on, on the show talking to a Pioko. Uh, but, uh, okay, so the other day, at the start of the week, you you did a pop quiz. Yes. Right? When you play an instrument. No, but, so let me ask you, who's instrumental? Here we go now, feel me flow. <laughs> so you said which... you were going to quiz somebody. Now they are quizzing you. Yeah, but I can answer. So, okay, okay which group song is this? Uh, Naughty by Nature. Very good. I'm not, I'm, I'm not that bad, you know? <laughs> you can try again. <laughs> Naughty by Nature. I've done this work for long. <laughs> you know, when I hear that, when I hear that, it's a very nice song. Oh, yeah. Naughty by Nature. So, Bena, the topic for today's Effective Living series yes. is emotional intelligence and building strong personal mm-hmm. value systems. Mami Equia Gezi mm. is our guest today. The biggest challenge in the power sector is the ECG. Mm-hmm. This is from a source who has been in the sector for long. Okay. Now, the source is telling me that ECG is not able to pay for transmission, making Greco ineffective. They are unable to pay GMPC. Um, Please start again. So th- this person has been okay. in the sector for long. He says, yeah. he said, bro, yes. the biggest challenge in the power sector is the ECG. Mm-hmm. ECG is not able to pay for transmission, making Greco ineffective. They are unable to pay GMPC to onwardly pay for gas at WAPCO. They are unable to pay generating companies, yet they can find the money to produ- procure motorbikes for the police. I mean, we haven't so seen, we haven't seen anything yet. And then he now analyzes the energy sector supply outlook mm-hmm. from okay. 20, 
2022 to 2027. And okay. what, how does it look like? <sighs> Looks dark, literally. So he's sort of comparing the off-peak period to the peak period capacity with hydrological data, gas flow data. He says our deficit will soon hit as high as 900 megawatts in the next couple of so years. So there's a deficit? If practical measures are not taken to contain the situation. See, which is why I was saying that um, we need... It's not a Japan matter we need to have this conversation with. A meeting of minds on the real situation when it comes to the capacity. Anuabu Matupoku Prempe. The minister His himself. Minister. Image. Mm -hmm. Wherever it is you are hiding from. Mm. Image. Don't emerge in the good times. Emerge. You see, because he must answer that question about whether we still have excess capacity. We need to know what our dependable capacity is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what it is now. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. It is very, very important. Can we meet the demand? second one? Yeah. The point your friend from the industry raises about the ECG debts. Mm -hmm. You see, ECG chased the general public for their revenue. Yes. Correctly so. They we owe them. We must pay. Yeah. To the extent that even secondary schools have to go on prepaid. Oh, yes. On prepaid. Yes. We are paying. And they, like I said, we so fully support it. Right. Yeah. And they rigged in a lot of money. And I think it's something that they've kept up. Yep. But we also need to know from ECG and the energy ministry. What is the current state of the government's debt Good question. to ECG? Yes. How much of that have they recouped? You see? Because once that is paid, perhaps it gives ECG some room to maneuver because then they can pay all the other people in that chain. Mm -hmm. So there are some significant questions that we need to be able to make progress here. We are not, we have not left. The trouble. And I like Japan, I don't think he came to say we, we no, won't buy it. I think, let's be fair. Let me just, let's be fair. You see, I'm just saying that in terms of the yesterday power. So he's saying that we called him because for the past three days there's been no power. Yeah. So a payment has been made. So the thing has reprieved. But when you look at the long term, it's not been solved. Uh -huh. So I'm just saying that his context was that the situation you had over the past three days. But, but Aloski, I will not buy that because I am not interested in when I, past three in, days. in having power for three days. And then then next go month he comes back days. again. And then, no, that is, how, how does a country run like that? Mm. That is not a sustainable way to plan. Mm -hmm. That is not a sustainable way to plan. It's so inefficient. Mm -hmm. So, there is a problem, yeah. obviously, which requires us to hear from certain people to give us proper information. Or we can also look for the the analysis and give it to the public as well because some of these are doc public documents, right? So, yes. analyzing the demand outlook, the generation adequacy ah. analysis, Transmission reinforcement requirements, mm -hmm. putting all of those that are, together. Those are critical things yeah, so. that will give us clues into why we are here. And I go back to say that I think at the base of this is money. Because oh. you let mentioned me, debts and all the of that. Okay. Okay. of the document. So this is a 2022 um, energy power. The, 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 let me just read it. It's called a power supply, energy, electricity supply plan. Electricity supply plan for 2022 and beyond. Okay. All right. So the following conclusions can be drawn from the plan. Mm -hmm. Um, an estimated amount of 872.8 mm USD or million US dollars will be required to buy natural gas to run the thermal plants. Okay. What's the what's the number again? 872.8 million USD. 872. So an average monthly of $72.7 million, mm -hmm. including provision for LCO, mm -hmm. diesel, and HFO during the gas outage period, mm -hmm. which leads to a total of almost $988 million required to buy fuel for 2022. That was the first point. Second point was the relocation of the 250 Ameri plant from Takwadi to Kumasi to reduce <laughs> transmission system losses significantly, which will also improve the voltage regulation in Kumasi and its environs. The third point was that the existing generating capacities will not be adequate to serve the projected demand with 18% reserve margin for any of the planning years. Let me repeat. The existing generating capacities, so when you put everything together, hydro, thermal, mm -hmm. gas, solar, the existing generating capacities will not be adequate to serve the projected demand with 18% reserve margin for any of the planning years. We are talking 2022, 2026. The timely completion of the committed projects barely has adequate generation up to 2024. So this is the real issue. Additional generation capacity will be needed 
from 2023, which is the year before this, mm-hmm. uh, this one we are in. Specifically, we need 184 megawatts, 187 megawatts, 114 megawatts, and 337 megawatts additional generation capacity in this respective year. So for 2023, we need 184 megawatts mm-hmm. to what was in 2022. Then 2024, which is this year, we need 187 in addition to the 184 we needed last year. Mm. For 2026, we need 114 megawatts. And then by 2027, we need 337 megawatts. All right. Now, based on the above conclusion, the following recommendations were made. Due to the growing electricity demand in Ghana, there's an urgent need to make arrangements to increase gas supply volumes for more thermal generation. It's also very important to make necessary investments towards an improved gas supply reliability owing to the increasing dependency on natural gas for power generation. Two, efforts should be expedited to complete the relocation of the 250 MW Ameri power plant to Kumasi by September of the previous year yeah. to uh, create a new generation enclave to reduce those losses. Three, we need a new generation enclave between Kaswa and Winneba to improve network stability and supply reliability to Accra. The results of analysis and supply demand outlook for the medium term, which is last year to 2027, mm-hmm. indicate that existing generation capacity will not be adequate to serve projected demand. I think this is the, re- the most important point. The existing, as of end 2022, generating capacity will not be adequate to serve projected demand with the required 18% reserve margin for any of the planning years in the medium term. So we need a timely completion of the 400 megawatt bridge power project to barely adequate generation up to next year, which is this year. So that bridge power project of 400 megawatts is desperately needed. For 2025 and beyond, we need to initiate a competitive least cost procurement of some additional generation capacity, 51, 392, and others, to continue to adequately meet Ghana's power supply demand with the required 80%. So all the things I'm saying is saying that you need an 80% required reserve margin so you can have a buffer when there's a challenge. And the basic point that the report is saying is that the demand supply outlook from last year to 2027 indicate that the existing generation capacity will not be adequate to serve the projected demand with the 18% reserve margin. Mm. All right. There are other things we need to do. We need to replace the existing 200 MVA auto transformer on the Ghana Cote d'Ivoire line at Pristia. We need to replace existing 200 MVA line at Ghana Burkina tie-in line at a place called Nayingia. Um, we need to retrofit and scale up operations of Valco. We need to upgrade the existing 161 KV line in Western Corridor. Mm. Some of these have been done, I need to yeah, say. some of them have been done. Um, we need renewable energy to also be increased. Quite a number of things need to be done. So I think the most important point we've made was that based on the 2022 demand analysis, we need more power than we have. Right. So when you say we have to go and unravel this um, so-called excess capacity, you're right. We need to go into it and yes. understand what you it see, is. If, if, because if we had, mm. I don't think the conversation around needing more power would come up. Because if we had excess, the excess should be there for us to feed on. But clearly, from the numbers, we do need to find ways of generating this power or else we'll have a lot more of this doomsday situation on our hand. Mm-hmm. More comments, more comments. Bernard, there are more comments here. People are sharing with us how the situation is impacting them. Um, Richard from Kufordia says, I went to the shop to spray the bonnet of my car. It took three days to finish because of power outages. The sprayer uh, has four apprentices. They did only my they did only my work in three days, which they charged me for 300 Ghana cities. How is he going to feed the team and his family with that amount? Look, Doomso is more serious than any issue we have in this country. Mm-hmm. Richard from Kofuridia said that. Mm. Good morning, Bernard and the CBS team. Please help me call on ECG to come to the aid of some section of citizens living in Tishi Asesewa near Martin Sowa Road in the Great Accra region. We've been without electricity for the past 36 hours. Mm. I personally called ECG via this number. She pro- he provides the number on That's Monday. The yeah. Despite over four follow-ups. I, wow. I wanted to say something when you spoke about well, ECG. Despite over four follow-ups. Right. Yeah. Go, go ahead and guys. You remember, to be fair to ECG, they actually did raise revenue when they did that thing. I think there's a problem. I, I considered that. This is what happens. I think in the past, ECG 
monies were ECG monies. Mm -hmm. But based on a new system created, when you make a payment to ECG, it goes directly to the consolidated fund. Mm -hmm. So, and because of the way money is mixed up, I'm not sure. There's a cash portal for mechanism. Maybe we need to call Bemachi to ask how that's working. But I feel like sometimes you may not be able to see the growth in their revenue because of the, the new arrangement of putting their monies directly into the consolidated fund. Mm -hmm. Do you get me? Yeah. So we are not, I, I don't know if like there was a direct way in which when there is a revenue, it goes to pay Gridco and Gridco then goes to pay the so-called mm -hmm. cash portal for mechanism. We need to look at how that's working. But Because but, I need to like in the last one year, that drive actually did raise their revenue. And I did, I, and I did admit that. Yeah. But the point I'm making is mm -hmm. the, the, the purpose for which that drive was done mm. when they started it, we were told, mm. was to raise the funding to pay off some of these things. Yes. So whether it goes to the consolidated fund, whether there's a new formula, we were told yeah. that we need to be prompt with our payments. We need to be fair to ECG because they have a lot of people who they need to service. So pay up. And they raised a significant chunk of money. We had Mr. Mahama here to tell us about what they were doing. In fact, they've come up with innovative ways mm -hmm. of raising more revenue, which is fine. So what is the problem? Which is why I also asked, what is the status of the government's debt to ECG as well? Because that is also part yeah. of the revenue mobilization. Yeah, right. The revenue mobilization effort cannot be just, just let us just go and us. go to the uh, private citizens. No. The state is a significant debtor. Yeah. To ECG? It's a serious situation. We'll take a short break, reflecting on the matters. Um, if you, okay, before we do the break, if you can read a few final comments before, right. because when we come back, we're going to yeah. the next issue. Despite over four follow-ups via calling the ECG number above, we are still in darkness as of this morning, Wednesday, 10th January. So this was yesterday, actually. The person mm -hmm. sent it, yes. All efforts to get ECG to fix the fault has proven futile. I believe with City amplifying this issue, ECG and its... Where is he writing from? He's writing from Tishi Asesewa, and Joshua it. Klu. Uh, and he says, what's the problem? He says they have not had power in the last 36 hours. They've wow. followed up and they've not had any feedback at all. So that that's his concern. Teshi Asasawa. That's worrying. Um, Alowski, mm? the narrative is false. Mm. The numbers are not adding up. And now a VAT on utilities. Hmm. Has the NPP research team finally concluded that the party will lose election 2024 and elements in the government are trying to cushion their lives with a take-home package? What kind of hardship is this? Meanwhile, I truly voted for this party because I believed in them. Shocking. Hmm. K from Accra is not happy at all. Hmm. Um, okay, so these have, these have been read. Uh, much, All right. much earlier. Okay, which instrument is this? Which song oh, is this? this is, this is, 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 is like, give us a more difficult one. Give us a more difficult one. Give 